On today's video, we are going to go over what's in my bag. A few things have changed this year from where I started back in, I believe it was March or April, my last what's in the bag to right now, which is mid-October 2024. We've got a few things that are the same, but we definitely have some changes. We're gonna play three holes of golf here at the beautiful Carrollwood Country Club. Just coming back off the hurricane, it's amazing to be back out here. The course has changed, there's a hundred trees gone, the bunkers are all washed out, but I am just happy to be back home playing a little bit of golf. Let's have some fun. First club up here is one that has not changed this year. It is the same driver I've stuck with all year and I'm gonna be sticking with it for quite some time, I think, because I love it so much. The Ping G430 Max 10K. This is a 10K MOI driver. I just seem to hit so many fairways with this club and I've developed a little bit of a fade off the tee box when I need it as well with this club. I can hit the draw, I can hit the fade, but they're nice and tight which I really like. Hitting a lot of fairways, and I feel like if I hit three balls with this thing, I could throw a blanket over where they land. It's just so consistent. We'll see if we can pull the fade off here on the first shot of this par four, about 365 this hole is playing today. I'm gonna peel one right off the water, hopefully. That is perfect. Now, I actually am testing out some shafts, so my normal shaft's not in the club today, but my normal shaft is the BGT Brava. Love that shaft. Again, makes the club extremely consistent, and that's what I'm looking for. I've gained some distance here this year, so I don't need max distance out of the club, and probably lose a few yards with this one over things like the Titleist GT and some of the other really long drivers that I've tested this year. But again, I'll sacrifice a couple yards for straight drives in the fairway and consistency, and that's what I'm getting out of this combo. I've been using the Caddy Talk Cube, by the way. That's been the rangefinder I've used most of the summer, especially on my home course here. 138 is what I've got. And we'll talk about some other clubs that have stayed the same this year, which is my iron. Until I find a better set of irons, which is gonna be very difficult to do. We found some great irons this year. The Malpy TS3 is probably being my favorites of the year. Also really like the McGregor MT Mills, and those have been my backup set, but my set, is the Adele SMS and SMS Pro combo. So four through six iron, I've got the SMS and I've got the SMS Pro in the seven through pitching wedge. Love the milling on the bottom of this club. Love the sole relief. It's almost like a V sole down there. It has relief both towards the face and towards the back of the club. You've got these three weight ports in the back, which you can dial in to get the right trajectory for your shot or the shot shape that you're looking for, or to forgive the sins that you commit. Like if you hit them off the toe, you might want to put that red weight off the toe. I just hit these things so consistent. The shaft in there that I've got is the Project X rifle shaft. And again, not a shaft I'd ever played before using these irons, but I really, really love these rifle shafts. They have a lower trajectory, so the ball's not ballooning on me. On those shorter irons and on the longer irons, I'm still getting nice peak heights. It's just a nice piercing trajectory out of these shafts. Love them. I'm gonna go nine iron here. We do have a little wind in our face. This has been about my 145 club here today. Slightly uphill as well, so this should be perfect. Good strike. It's drawn in there nicely. Should be right there in the middle of the green. The other piece of technology that I use quite a bit is this ShotScope X5. I've been using this watch a lot. As you know, I really like the Garmin S70. That's a fantastic golf watch, especially if you want the health features and if you wear that as your everyday watch, I think that's probably the best choice out on the market. It's also the most expensive choice, of course, but boy, is it great with the virtual caddy, all these great things. But this X5, I'll tell you what ShotScope does better than anyone is the stat reporting. So that's why I've been wearing this watch a lot because I really, really want to work on my game and find out the parts of my game that are lacking. The strokes gained with this is next level. It's better than anything else out on the market that I've seen. And that's why I've been using this watch quite a bit. All right, we're gonna be taking out the putter here. And that is another club that has changed for me. As you know, I love the Lab Golf DF3 and I putted very well with this putter all summer. But if you saw my videos about a month ago, we just launched our own Let's Play Through Mere Mortal brand, and we started with a putter. And so of course I'm playing the Mere Mortal putter. I co-designed this putter with Docus Design out in Japan, got to go out there and actually pick up my prototype in Japan. It was such a cool experience. This putter has nice weight to it. It is a classic answer shape. The milling though is absolutely exceptional. You're not gonna find a better, more purely milled putter out there on the market. And for the limited edition, the first hundred of these putters, which are already sold out, 
out. We were able to get the price down from about $450 where Docus normally retails its putters down to $299 is where I had this one priced at. I love this putter. I'm putting so well with this one, especially the short putts. I feel very confident over. Let's see if we can roll one in right now. All right, we've got an uphill putt all the way, a little left to right. Getting the weight of the putts is so important so you don't three putt, and that's what I'm doing really well with this putter as well, in addition to making the little ones. Took a bit of a bumpy ride up there, but we've got ourselves a tap-in and a par, and we're headed to a par five. Now, there's a few clubs here that have changed that hopefully we'll have a chance to hit out there. Hole number two here is a straightaway par five, 525 from our tee box here. Probably gonna take three good shots to get home, especially into this wind, but it's gonna give us an opportunity to hit a couple clubs that are new here at the end of 2024. Now, a feature of this hole that has now changed after the hurricane is there's a tree stump over here because there used to be a big cypress tree there along the right. I used to take it right over that tree. It was kind of my alignment line. Now that's gone. So it actually makes this hole a little easier for my draw. I don't have to flirt with that tree anymore, but definitely some of the character of this course has changed post hurricane here. Position A. So a fairly big change for me this year, later in the year, was I was playing Tacoma three and five woods. And I have kept the five wood in my bag. I hit that club so good. It's about my 225 club. Then maybe stretch it to 235 if I really go after it. But the three wood has changed now to match my driver. I've now got a ping G430 three wood. And I don't know why it took me so long to try this club. In fact, I didn't try it until I think it was September this year. And when I tried it, I put it in the bag straight away. Just a great compliment to my driver. I've never actually had a matching wood set. If you followed the show, generally, you know that I have a hodgepodge of clubs. A lot of times all three woods would be different. At least now I have two of them that are the same. And I'm really loving this ping three wood. I like the way it sets up. It's not quite as low profile as my ping G425 three wood. I gamed that one a couple years ago. This one's got a little bit more rounder top to it, a little bit deeper face. I think it works really well off the tee and off the deck. We're gonna give it a shot off the deck right now. One thing that has not changed for me this year is the balls. I'm still playing the Legato 3085s. Love these balls. Love the price on Amazon. I'll leave a link to them down below, but you can sometimes even find them on a deal for like $19.99 they were at Prime Day. Just a great ball. I think it competes with anything on the market and why spend more, especially if you're a mere mortal like me. So you can probably tell I'm hitting the ball longer this year. I went from a average drive of about 98 miles per hour, about 255 to now well over hundred miles per hour. I'm driving at about 103, 104 miles per hour on average. And that's added about 10 yards of distance. I owe a lot of it, honestly, to working with the hack motion. It's a training tool that I've been using. I've done a couple videos on it this year. It works with your wrist angles, getting those right. And it fixes a lot of the swing faults. I know my swing fault is I do not stay down on the ball. I don't have enough lag and I really come up on the ball. I'm still not there where I wanna be yet, but I'm making a lot of progress with the hack motion. It can also help with your putting. And I realized using the hack motion putting that I actually had a little turn in my wrist, just a little bit of excess movement that I need to get rid of. And uh, I'm working on that as well. And again, I think that's been helping my putting in addition to the fine putters I've been using this year. And here in November, Hack Motion is offering their best prices of the entire year. So if you've been on the fence, it's time to get off, check it out and start improving your game. I'm gonna leave some links down in the description. You can save a few bucks there as well. So a big change for me was a three club change in the wedges this year. I've been playing Vokey wedges the entire career of me doing Let's Play Through. And for a lot longer than that, I played Vokey wedges. This year, I have switched to the Indie Golf ATW wedges. I keep the same loft structure, 50, 54, 58. I really love these wedges because they have a full face groove. They've got a lot of technology built in if you watch my review about these things. They put a ton of spin on the ball. I need more spin. I just don't generate enough spin naturally. These ones have helped me generate some really nice spin around the greens. Let's see if we can pull it off right now. I've got a tricky little shot over a bunker. I've got to carry the bunker. I'm in the rough too, so it's gonna be even harder to put spin on these. And uh, the pin there is in the middle of the green. Let's see if we can get tight. I'm gonna open the face up here, play it a little off my front foot. Let's see if we can get the uh, weight of this shot correct. Pretty decent. <laughs> and yeah, just a nice soft little bit of roll out. There's no way to get super checkup out of that type of lie that I had, but 
distance wise, we nailed that one. I've got a birdie putt. Okay, it's time. Let's see if we can roll another one in here. We've rolled a lot in this year. Made a lot of birdie putts. I think if I was tracking all my stats all year long, definitely had about 30% more birdies than any year me playing golf. We've got the handicap down to 2.8 now. That's huge for me. Lowest I've ever been. Do we have one? Ooh. <laughs> oh, I thought we had it. I thought we had it. Got a couple more things to show you before we end this one, and we've got a beautiful par three to play as well. So something people always ask me on this show if I don't explicitly mention it is, what is the app on your phone? This is not a phone actually, this is the Garmin G80, Approach G80. It's probably the oldest piece of tech in my bag, but it just works flawlessly. I use this as both a launch monitor as well as specifically checking distances after I hit drives, if I'm comparing drives. We can get very accurate distances with the GPS that Garmin provides. Absolutely love this device. We've got 156 here. I'm going nine iron. A little wind behind us now. We've turned around here on the course. If it's the club, it's going to be a good one. Just left of the pin there. Now, before we finish things off here, I will mention a couple of other things. First, give some thanks to the folks that make this show possible. Playbetter.com, where I get all the technology on this show, the stuff I'm using here today. And of course, Shipsticks, who has been shipping our golf clubs all over the world, not only for Let's Play Through, but for the travel channel as well, Let's Play Through Travel. If you're not subscribed to that, please head over there. We just got back from a big Mexico trip and we've got Scotland coming down the pipe. We shot all those videos, they're gonna be edited now. It's gonna be a lot of fun over there. So I could really appreciate your support over on that channel as well. And thanks to the folks that make this show possible. All right, let's see if we can finish strong here make this birdie putt. We lipped out on the last one. Maybe this one will drop. It's a little shorter, I think even. I'd say 10 feet. All right, we're going downhill, a little left to right here. Oh, I'd love to see it drop. Mmm, wasn't meant to be. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Thank you for your support of this channel. And I'll catch you back here next time on another edition of Let's Play Through.